You can now play Xbox games on your iPad, on your iPhone, on your non-gaming Windows laptop, MacBooks will get back to that, but here's what you need to get set up with the latest version of the Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta. I've always said that cloud gaming is the future, and also that the future is not quite here yet, although it's a little bit closer now that Microsoft has a version of its cloud gaming beta that works on iPads and on regular Windows laptops that don't have any kind of graphics card at all, also works on your iPhone. Left out of this list explicitly is Mac OS systems, that's like your MacBooks and your iMacs. However, I did a little bit of testing and I got it to kind of work on those two. Your mileage may, as they say vary. This is not a brand new concept. There are a lot of cloud gaming services out there. There's GeForce Now from NVIDIA, there's Stadia from Google, there's Luna from Amazon, and even this Xbox cloud gaming beta has previously worked on some Android devices. So the biggest question is how do I get on this beta so I can stream Xbox games to my iPad? Well, you have to be an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member. That's the most expensive membership level they have. That's the uh, you know Xbox games on your console included, a whole bunch of those, more than 100. Same thing on the PC. There's also uh, EA Play built into that. That's EA's version of a catalog of games that you can play anywhere. Although I don't think I've seen any on this cloud beta so far. You also get Xbox Live, with that, which is the uh, paywalled online competitive gaming and a lot of games on the Xbox, although they've taken things like Fortnite out of that, so that's less important than it used to be. But if you are an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member, you may have received just automatically an email invitation, go check your email, to participate in this beta. Almost everyone I've talked to who's been an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member has gotten that invite. Now it works in Chrome and Microsoft Edge on Windows machines, uh, works on Safari on iPads and iPhones, kind of works on Safari on MacBooks. When I tried it in Chrome, I couldn't get it to recognize that my controller was connected. In Safari, I had uh, better luck on an iMac and on a MacBook, but it was not as good performance-wise. It was much less stable than on the officially supported for right now platforms. Now keep in mind, this is only a subset of your Xbox games. It's not the ones you purchased and downloaded individually. Uh, you can't play Cyberpunk on it. You can't play Assassin's Creed Valhalla on it. It is games that are included with the Xbox Game Pass. And there are a lot of them. It's not all of them. And games come into Game Pass and leave Game Pass every month. Uh, so I'm sure the collection will vary. But there's all the stuff you expect to find, like, you know, Destiny 2 and Gears of War 5. Outriders is on there. That's a brand new game. Doom Eternal. Also a lot of indie stuff like Outer Wilds. My favorite new feature, and this is especially useful if you're playing on an iPad, although I guess it could work on a touchscreen Windows tablet or hybrid as well, is some games support on-screen controls. So that means you load up the game, you don't use a separate gamepad controller, and instead you have the Xbox controls mapped onto the screen. Sometimes it's just you know generic Xbox buttons, a button for the right trigger, one for the left trigger, uh, a little stick to move around with, you know, the A button, the X button. In some games, they have specific buttons for that game programmed in. In either case, it's kind of like you're playing an iPad native game. Now, iPad and phone game controls have really evolved over the years. The touchscreen controls are much more sophisticated now than they were when people started gaming on iPads. The Xbox version, not quite there yet. It just feels more like a proof of concept. But for some games, especially ones that are turn-based and don't really require a lot of real-time, split-second interaction, I kind of liked it. I took uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, which is a real traditional computer role-playing game, uh, and with the touch controls on the iPad, it was exactly the sort of super intense, super deep RPG experience I've always wanted on an iPad, but you really don't usually find. So I tried the Microsoft Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta on Windows PCs, I tried it on iPads, I tried it on Macs, I tried it on a bunch of different devices. Generally speaking, it feels a lot like GeForce Now, which is the NVIDIA version of this, a lot like Stadia. 
in that occasionally, if everything is aligned properly, you really forget you're not playing on a local machine. But a lot of the time, the performance can be stuttery, uh, there can be delay, there can be slowdown, your controller feels like it has some lag because it's sending the signal up into the cloud where a server plays the game and then broadcasts the result back to you. That's how cloud gaming works. There's a certain amount of lag just built into the system and you really have to work hard to minimize that. So on all of these cloud platforms, including the new Xbox beta version, you're going to get images that break up with digital noise. You're going to get times when you, you know, input something on your controller and it either doesn't go through or it goes through in a very delayed way. The camera can jump around. For split-second Twitch gaming, things like first-person shooters or competitive online esports games, I don't think we're there yet on these. For casual games, some third-person games, especially tactical or turn-based games, this is exactly the kind of thing that cloud gaming can be really good for, especially now, and I look forward to seeing this beta expanded, hopefully to more devices and hopefully to a larger catalog of games.